The first step in installing Kali Linux on a dual boot system alongside Windows 10 is backing up your systems and creating yourself a Windows recovery slash repair disk. That's the number one mistake I see people make when they go ahead and start dabbling with dual booting operating systems or even just messing with disk management, disk partitioning in general. Um, you're going to mess up your boot drives, right? If you're experimenting for the first time, make sure you don't mess this step up. Back up your drive, everything, create a repair disk. Step number one. What's going on guys, I'm Keep Warrior Tony, and today we're going to be dual booting Kali Linux, which is an advanced penetration testing and hacking tool that a lot of people uh, use to get started in the world of cybersecurity and even network monitoring, right? You can use this a lot in your homes to make sure that there isn't crazy stuff going on in your network that, that shouldn't be there. Um, you can use it in an offensive setting as well. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. If you enjoy this video, learn something new, make sure you hit that sub button. Really appreciate you for doing so. But for now, let's get into the dual boot. So we've got step one out of the way, right? You've got your recovery desk. Um, that is crucial. Again, I want to highlight it here again. That is the most crucial step in this whole process. If you guys burn your primary Windows drive, you're going to be SOL. You're not going to know what to do. But moving forward, there are more prerequisites before we ever get started. So number one, you're going to need another USB. I like to, you know, make sure that mine are labeled up properly. And um, this is going to host the Kali ISO file, right? So you're going to put this into your machine. The second thing that you're going to need is a software called Rufus. Now that is a really handy tool that's going to burn the Kali ISO image to your USB. And that brings us to number three. Head on over to Kali.org, download the latest revision of their software. I'm going to be picking the 2020.3 version, and um, that's what I'll be burning here. So next, now that we've got our USB made ready to go, the next thing to do is do a little bit more research on your machine. Uh, you got to figure out a couple of things like what kind of BIOS version uh, do you have. For example, most of us here uh, in 2020, we're going to be using UEFI. Uh, but if you're going to be doing this for BIOS, things may be slightly different, but regardless, you just need to know uh, which one of those systems that you need to make the USB for and target towards that. Uh, the next thing you need to do is see how much available hard drive space. A lot of these machines we're going to be doing this dual boot on, uh, they're going to be laptops. Usually 256 gigabyte SSDs are going to be installed in these unless you've got something you know really big and fancy, uh, but most of us don't. So that's what we need to take into account, right? I have 256 gigabytes. Uh, the primary Windows installation I have on here is very lightweight. I don't do a whole lot of uh, gaming or editing or anything on here. So we're going to be using that existing partition to shrink it down. We're going to give ourselves uh, we're going to give ourselves 60 gigabytes worth of space to work with in our Kali installation, um, and this is where we're going to. Uh, install the files to later on and directly related to the memory situation the next thing you need to do is take into account how much physical ram does my system have right because the swap file that we're going to be creating to help with uh, kind of load balancing i guess you could say in short that parameter is actually going to be decided by how much ram that you have in your machine so here in this dell laptop that i've got and uh, i'm installing kali on here alongside windows today i've got eight gigabytes worth of ram so i'm gonna need four gigabytes to add as my swap drive so now we have a general listing of i'm going to be targeting uefi bios with this install i've got 60 gigabytes worth of space four gigabytes for a swap drive, right? You've got your Windows recovery, you've got your Kali installation, and at this point, we're ready to go. So when you guys are ready, take your Kali installation disk, insert it into the USB port on your laptop, and proceed to restart the system. So we're gonna restart right now, and like I said, just make sure you're on your toes because uh, this key is gonna be different for other laptops. Mine on this laptop, for example, is F12. So I'm going to be ready here to hit the F12 button as we load back up. There it is. Okay, so what we need to do now is pick the correct device to load off of. Now this is where it would have come into account whether you're booting the disk from BIOS or UFEI. 
right? If I were to select USB storage device, it recognizes that this uh, hard disk is bootable. Um, however, it's not formatted for that. If I were to, if I would try to boot in the legacy mode here, it won't work because I have this uh, set up for UEFI boot. So we're going to go ahead and, and pick my SanDisk partition one here. We're going to hit enter. That's going to load us into Kali here. And now we can actually begin the good stuff. So as of the last few revisions, uh, Kali has included a graphical install, which is really nice and handy. We're going to go ahead and be sending it with the graphical. Go ahead and select enter here. And uh, you can pick your language. We're going United States, American English. And at this point, you might get an error that pops up because the system is detecting in, in a minute here all of the devices and looking for the firmware files associated with them. Um, so I know that my laptop is missing a couple of different firmware files. Um, in some cases, that may be an issue for you. You have to load them onto a USB or just install without it, connect to the internet, and get them later. That's usually the best option. So we're gonna select no to that prompt. And at this point, what the system is trying to do is um, configure the network on a LAN basis. So this is gonna fail unless you have an RJ45 cable plugged in directly to your router and system. We don't, we're just gonna go ahead and proceed with a local installation. So we'll just bypass this here. Next thing you want to do is decide the host name here for the device. That's the name that the network is going to recognize your device as. And here we go with the full name and the login. I'm going to go ahead and put keyboard you're down. There we go. And we're going to do password. Choose the Eastern time zone. That's where I am located at. Now, here's where things get a little tricky here with my installation because I don't like to use the general guided. Um, here's why. If you use the largest continuous free space, it will select all in one. Okay. Watch what it's going to do here. So if you look at the swap file, it's only one gigabyte, right? We need four gigabytes of swap and you can't go in here and edit it. So what I'll do now is delete it. I'll delete the main file system that I created for me. And we are gonna go ahead and uh, create these partitions on our own. So we've got the 62.9 gigabytes free space here. We're going to come in, create a new partition. This is going to be our swap. So it's going to be four gigabytes, period. There we go. We're going to put it at the end because in the end, it doesn't really matter. Okay, we're done. Oh, and then the next thing we need to do, you can give it a name if you'd like, but that won't really control anything. You want to set it for the swap area. And I do like to put a name on there for documentation purposes. Next, we're going to go ahead and select our 58.9 gigabytes, create another system there. We're going to name this one root. So it's going to be the root of the drive. There we go. It does not need to be a bootable flag. Boom, we're done setting up this partition. So total, we have our four gigabyte swap drive. We have our almost 60 gigabytes uh, primary boot drive here. There we go. We're going to write the disk. We're going to select no network mirror because like I said earlier, we'll be configuring our network settings later after the installation. And here's interesting. I had not seen this before um, since I installed Kali Linux um, a while ago, but it asks you if you want to install a different type of desktop environment um, and also the tools here. We're going to keep all the defaults and um, just do a basic installation here. So right now it's installing the grub bootloader, which is a really important aspect. That's what you're going to be booting into when you start up the service. And uh, 
By default, when you install Kali Linux after you've installed Windows, it's typically going to boot the Kali Linux straight away, right? I'll show you how to fix that right at the end. All right, so there we go. We've got our installation complete message. We can go ahead and click uh, continue. Uh, it's going to automatically reboot the system. And like I said, it will bring up the Grub bootloader. Uh, now you can access Windows straight from that menu as well. But, you know, for a lot of us, this is going to be our main PCs and we're going to want to keep Windows on top. Um, I'll show you how to do that as soon as we, uh, you know, make sure that this call installation works. Uh, we also want to double check the Windows as well. So here we are in the Grub. We're going to continue on into Kali Linux. Just check out that interface here for a second. Pop back over on into Windows. Make sure everything's okay there. Um, and then I'll show you how to um, set up the proper boot order. All right, so we are now into the system. Um, not going to touch about, you know, top 10 things to do or anything. I will make a future video about that, but let's go ahead and check our host operating system, that Windows, to make sure everything's okay. Log out, do a restart, and I'll show you again. I won't touch anything. By default, it's going to load up that grub. So here we are, and if you want to leave it like this, that's fine, but this is going to pop up every single time. Oh, and apparently if you don't um, do anything, it'll load up Kali for you, so that's cool. All right, so this time we caught the grub, and uh, you want to make sure you're, you're ready to select the Windows Boot Manager. This should boot our Windows, no problem. Bam, there we go. Now we're on our Windows. Real quick, I'll show you how to change the default boot order in case you don't want that step to be involved when you're booting your host or your primary operating system. Um, so we're going to go ahead and load in the BIOS like we did in the beginning, or load up the boot order like we did in the beginning so we can go into the BIOS, hit our F12 key, head on down into BIOS setup. Now... It's going to be different for everybody, but I've got a boot sequence here. You can see straight off the bat how my Kali is right up top. We're going to select this, go down, boom, hit apply. We save, we apply, exit, and now without doing anything, we're going to boot straight into our windows. And if you want to get back into the Kali, all you need to do is um, hit the F12 button uh, when you are loading up like I am right now. But for now, guys, that's going to do it here. Um, I do hope you learned something. You guys can start fiddling around with your calling machines. Um, really fun tool, but I do want to say, you know, if you plan to do any uh, penetration testing per se, make sure you have yourself a nice home setup, right? Any kind of old routers you got laying around, you know, don't just scan for uh, in promiscuous mode these networks. Again, guys, you got to understand when you have a tool like this with power, um, there is responsibility that comes with it. So get yourself some, uh, used stuff. Don't, you know, make an excuse. I don't have a router. You can pick something up like this. It's freaking dusty, uh, cheap, probably for free somewhere. You can get one of these, right? But, you know, just be careful. I guess the moral of the story here is be careful of what you're doing with this tool. All right. So for now, I'm going to be signing off. I'm Keep Warrior Tony. If you guys want to see some more Linux videos, I'm going to be studying for my CCNA here soon. I like keyboards. Uh, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in a video soon. Take care.